All right, Paula Reed is joining us now from our Washington bureau to talk about this list of potential Supreme Court nominees. Paula, uh, what do you make of the list? What do you make of already a little bit of a controversy with uh, with the, the tweets from from Judge Willett? Well, Judge Willett is one of my favorite Twitter accounts on Twitter, for those of us <laughs> legal nerds. He's very funny. You don't get this a lot from the bench. I can't think of any other judge in that sort of court of last resort, you like to call it, the highest court in their state, who is that active, that prolific, that sort of funny on Twitter. Now, of course, the candidate Donald Trump has gotten himself into some trouble on Twitter. Justice Willett will tend to be amusing, wholesome uh, in his, his tweets. He tweets a lot about his family. He tweets about sports, politics. So Twitter is really how most people know uh, Justice Willett. But in terms of the rest of the list, this is what you would expect. It's not terribly diverse in terms of race or gender, but these are mostly conservative judges from Midwestern states. And that's important because the court has been criticized repeatedly because such a large portion of it hails from New York specifically. So the geography is, is important here. Um, and this is exactly the group that you would you would think. These are people who are not too extreme in their conservative views, but they tend to sort of lean conservative in their opinions. And Amber, I think, described them as, as slightly boring. I think that's actually correct. Again, with the exception of Justice Willett and his, his Twitter account. Paul, I got to say, I'm on Justice Willett's Twitter account. 37,000 plus followers. You're right. The last image he has them. here is of uh, it's a basketball hoop with the sun, and the sun is going into three different pictures of the hoop. <laughs> and the, the caption, God got game. Yes. That says everything right there. Yeah. It does. That's his pinned tweet. That's the top uh, of his Twitter account and has been for a while. But this is part of why you don't see judges usually on social media or on Twitter, because social media, especially tweets, tweets live forever. Even if you delete them, they become part of your record. Most judges and justices want to be evaluated on their legal opinions and their legal record, not something funny or not so funny, depending on who's looking at it, that they posted on Twitter or Facebook. That's a good point. Very good point. So how, where are we? Remind us again on Merrick Garland, the Supreme Court nominee that the White House is trying to push forward. How is that going? Are we expected to see anything on that as well? No, it's not going well. No one really expects there to actually be a vote on Merrick Garland. Even when he was appointed, it sort of seemed like the kind of nominee, almost a sacrifice in a way. You think, all right, we know this person is, they're not going to get a vote. They're likely not to, going to be confirmed. So perhaps if Hillary Clinton uh, receives the presidency, if she wins the election and she puts forth someone, then they'll put one of those other people who was on that list up for nomination. It, no one here realistically expects that Merrick Garland's actually going to get a vote or will ever actually sit on the Supreme Supreme Court. But just a few days ago, we saw the consequence of being short a judge. We saw the court couldn't mm -hmm. even make a decision on the Affordable Health Care Act birth control mandate. They had to send it all the way back down to the lower court because they could not actually work out a decision on their own. Of course, they could have had a tie, but that's not how they chose to deal with it. And that is a direct result of the absence of Justice, Justice Antonin Scalia. If he had been on the court, that likely would have been a victory for those who were opposing the Affordable Health Care Act. A lot of people worried that exact thing would happen. Justice reporter Paula Reed, thank you so much for joining us.